Your ears are about to explode. It's the Chris Soriano Podcast. March 26, 2015. It's the Chris Soriano Podcast. Chris at nycradio.com if you want to be a part of the podcast and send your info and feedback our way, and we'll read some of it over the air. Uh, So today is March 26, 2015, and we remember 15 years ago today. (sighs) Wrestling died. Um, it was 15 years ago, folks, that a familiar, um, TV show went off the air and pro wrestling has never been the same. (laughs) 15 years ago today, Monday Nitro signed off for the final time and WCW was dead now uh, March 31st I believe was the actual last day of WCW programming because that was worldwide and I believe that was on that Saturday yes it was that Saturday was worldwide and that was, you know, if, if you want to do some trivia to try and fool somebody, what was the final WCW broadcast? It was not Nitro. It was Worldwide with Scott Hudson and Mike Tenay signing off. But the big part was Nitro. And them going out of business was very tough on a lot of people in the business and a lot of wrestling fans. And to me, I don't think pro wrestling has been the same since. I really don't. You know, I grew up on Monday Nitro. The first ever experience I had with pro wrestling was my my father turning the channel, flipping it on on a Monday night, and seeing Sting Surfer staying with the beach, with the beach blonde hair and macho man in his colorful attire and I was hooked on wrestling I was hooked on nitro and shortly thereafter I found out about the WWF because a lot of my friends in school uh, were big wrestling fans and they were huge into the Undertaker and Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart so I got into that, but I was always a loyal Nitro person. I, I always wish I could have done those Nitro parties and sent a tape in for a Nitro party. I mean, I, if, if, if I was in my 20s when Nitro was on the air, I probably would have done a Nitro party. Probably would have. No, not probably. I would have done it, but there's only so much you can do when you're, you know, nine years old. Um, but Nitro... It changed the game, man. You know, it changed the game of pro wrestling on television. You know, yeah, Vince started Raw in 93, and Vince was the first guy to go into primetime on Monday nights, but, but Nitro, two hours, and then they went to three hours, and they were getting mega numbers on three hours, and just what they did, starting off with the cruiserweights and all this stuff, and then the main event, and Michael Buffer, it was something unique. It was, it, was, it was cool. It was fun to watch. It made you proud to be a wrestling fan watching Nitro. And I will never forget turning on Nitro, 
and seeing Vince McMahon start off WCW Monday Nitro. It was surreal to me. I was like, wow, is this even happening? I, I turned to my mom and dad and said, is this, is, is this the right channel? And even they were in shock. I mean, here I am, a, a 10-year-old kid, die-hard pro wrestling fan. And I'm like, oh my God, the owner of the WWF, the guy that stone cold stuns all the time, is on Nitro. With raw images in the background. This is, this is Bizarro World. And then the opening package comes on and Booker T and Scott Steiner. They do battle uh, after the Ric Flair promo and challenging Sting. And that was cool to see. Of course, me being a huge Sting fan, I was very pleased to watch Sting and Sting be the last match. But even though I wasn't a big Scott Steiner fan, the Booker and Steiner did a did a good job that night. I thought the cruiserweight action was really good. Um, and I I just remember sitting there and I'm like, is is, is this really going to be the last Nitro? And then when they did the thing at the end with Shane McMahon, quote, buying it, end quote. Again, I was 10 at the time, so I thought it was real. I was jumping up and down. Like a little kid, because I was a little kid. And I remember turning on TNT the next Monday night. And I'm like, where's Nitro? And my parents are like, there is no Nitro. There is no WCW anymore. And I was like, wait, what? So I guess in an effort to, you know, make it like they they not telling me how, that Santa Claus isn't real, they're like, oh, no, 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 the, the WCW people are going to be on the WWF. And then I started watching Raw and Raw full-time, obviously, because there was nothing else to watch. But it was so surreal to me, and it was so it was shocking to see Shane McMahon, you know, and again, we know Vince started off the show, but to see Shane McMahon, the son of Vince McMahon, in a WCW ring, holding a WCW microphone, his name comes up on WCW Nitro graphics. It was so unreal. It blew my mind. And looking back on it 15 years later, I'm just like, wow. But we can all agree that wrestling has not been the same since WCW went off the air. And I guess what hurts the most is how it was bought by Vince and it was really kind of just skull fucked and buried I mean they revived ECW in 2005 but nothing they did nothing with WCW they did nothing except shit on the name of WCW and they still do to this day I think I think what they should have done Shane buys the company that's all well and good and then I think that they should have made it its own entity I think they should have put it on on Saturday nights forget Velocity have WCW Saturday Nitro on TNN have that running for a while until storyline wise, you know, they get their balls twisted and we have a war and WCW starts infiltrating the WWF and then you have a war. Because then if you would have waited a year, you would have had Flair, you would have had Steiner, you would have had Hogan, Hall, Nash. Who knows if Sting would have came over? You would have had obviously Booker and DDP. 
what killed that whole thing was they had money staring at them in the face and they ended up still making a lot of money. But putting ECW and WCW together made no fucking sense. First of all, even though it wasn't Eric Bischoff running the thing, which that's another thing. You could have waited a year to have Bischoff take over, swoop in, and lead the invasion. But Paul Heyman and ECW, who hated WCW more than they did the WWF, made no sense for them to even combine each other. And what they did was they made it all about the McMahons. They had Shane and Stephanie run WCW and ECW. I mean, Heyman wasn't even the owner of ECW. It was Stephanie. And then you had Austin defect. Kurt Angle joined. And mainly a lot of the ECW guys were there. They, they, they had been WWF attitude guys for a, a, a year and a half already. It made no It was basically just watching people that had been in the WWF for a year and a half fight other guys. They still made a lot of money, but they could have just, they could have gave the wrestling fans what we wanted if they would have waited. And and to this day, I, I don't know why. I, I guess Vince had his own little thing. You know what? Let me fuck WCW this way. And then down the line, he, he ultimately buried ECW. But I thought the invasion angle was done all wrong. They made DDP a stalker of someone's wife, for Christ's sake. They made them out to be fools. And while TNA Wrestling has, you know, they want to say that they've been the number two wrestling promotion in America since 2002, the sport of pro wrestling has never been the same since Nitro went off the air 15 years ago today. And I don't think it ever will. I don't think anyone will ever come close to the WWE ever again. You need money. None of these, not, none of these promotions have money. Like W, I mean, WCW had Ted Turner's checkbook. They were loaded. They were more loaded than Vince. Ted Turner was a mogul. WCW had the resources, they had the set, they had the the equipment, they had everything, they had the stars. TNA got Kurt Angle and Christian and Sting and Booker T and Rob Van Dam and all of these guys. And they still couldn't make a dent. They had Mick Foley. And they still couldn't make a dent. In the WWE. And no one ever will. WCW pushed them. To the brink. And they got right back up. And they are a powerhouse now. And yeah. Ratings aren't what they used to be? Okay. They they are a, a worldwide media conglomerate. They are everywhere. And that's never going to change. And all, and again, and while we watch WWE now, I guess because there's nothing really else out there, I mean, I can't find El Rey Network on, for Lucha Underground. I don't know where the hell they are. And, you know, I, I don't think anyone can flub more TV deals than, the, than Ring of Honor. And TNA, a couple of occasional good matches now and then, but for the most part, nothing. 
And think about it, they, they, they had the Hardy, they got the Hardys over and the Dudley Boys too, and they still couldn't do anything. TNA. But all we have uh, of WCW obviously is obviously the network. They have all the pay-per-views on there, but we have memories. And we have memories of what WCW meant to us as pro wrestling fans, and we will never, ever forget that. Back after this on the Soriano Podcast. <laughs> 